Safe in the Hands of Love bridges seemingly impossible gaps between harsh noise and pop grooves, making you rethink the difference between underground and mainstream. An abstracted self-portrait that defies genre and overwhelms the senses. On Tierra Wack's debut audiovisual album, the Philly rapper and former freestyle wizard builds her own surrealist universe. Each minute-long song comes with visuals as allegorical as they are absurd. The whole thing's only 15 minutes, but Wack's creativity feels infinite. <laughs> 25 years into their storied career, the Midwest slowcore gods channel fear and rage into a tense, rumbling elegy for the end of America. A masterful evolution of the trio's minimalist ethos, a constant sense of ambient terror, makes the album's moments of true beauty feel all the more devastating. Building a new sound on tight loops and experimental line-blurring production, Earl Sweatshirt packs 15 tracks into 25 minutes, making peace with the death of his father, working with the younger generation of collaborators, and affirming his status as one of the most brilliant voices in the game. <laughs> Studying flamenco with masters, but also idolizing Bjork, Kate Bush, and Missy Elliott, Barcelona-born singer-songwriter Rosalia combines folklore and futurism. On El Malcherer, in one translation, Toxic Love, a storm of doomed romance draws from both 13th century Spanish literature and Justin Timberlake's Crimea River. Lush, Snail Mail's debut album, is a document of teenage heartache by an actual teen. Filled with Lindsay Jordan's piercing clarity, pristine guitar tones, and aching pop melodies that hit right where it hurts. Proof that vulnerability can be punk as hell. With Honey, the queen of crying on the dance floor returns after an eight-year solo hiatus with a set of wistful synth-pop and humanist house. Robin arranged its tracks in the order in which they were written, her hero's journey spanning from heartbreak to healing. German producer DJ Cozy drifts from psychedelic down-tempo to ecstatic French house, a cross between a merry prankster and a club shaman. Guided by a wide-eyed sense of wonder, Knock Knock feels like a nearly 80-minute vacation to somewhere weird and friendly. <laughs> On her seventh album, Casey Musgraves slyly pushes the boundaries of what country can sound like in a way that still feels like comfort food. Golden Hour is endearing and ambitious, embellishing her subtle storytelling with disco grooves, fading sunsets, and acid trip afterglows. A breathtaking expansion of her previous records, Mitski bends pop structures into impossible M.C. Escher mazes. As Mitski assumes an array of characters that perform feminine abjection with solemn grace, be the Cowboy is as stunning in compositional complexity as it is in emotional depth. I'm a 